This is a two inch socket weld coupling along with a short piece of pipe. It's very much like some parts that I've done over the years using a turntable. I used to take in parts like this to do in my side hustle welding business. These clips are from a run of about 50 parts I did a while back. And the setting should work great on that socket weld coupling because the thickness and diameter are the same. If you've got a welding business or even starting a side hustle, one of the first things you'll want to look at when you start getting round parts is a turntable. It makes you more efficient, lets you quote jobs better, lets you make more money. So back in the day, like 20 something years ago, when I was doing a side hustle, I got a lot of round parts like this, just about this size, a little bit shorter in stainless steel, hundreds of them. So I, I made a little turntable using an old bicycle. That worked out for a while, but then I bought one on eBay. That's this one right here. So I've had this one for quite a while now. It's got a three jaw chuck. Problem is I fried the board. I had to buy a new board for it here. For some reason now it's limited to one RPM. And that led me to buy this one. It's a little bit lighter duty, but it's got a quick, a quick release chuck on it. There's different features that you can get on any weld turntable. I'm going to show you really quickly a couple of features on these two. Then I'm going to show you the Cadillac that I have as a demo unit now. And I'm going to weld some parts with today. All right, this has got a standard three jaw chuck here. I, you notice I bent the ears on this key here because it was always in the way of this turntable here. Sometimes you need the turntable for, for fastening parts. Other times you need the chuck. This one's got a little crank, crank thing on here where I can set this at any angle I want. And this one has a through hole which means I can run a purge hose from the other side. That's a good feature to have. Now, like I mentioned, this is limited to one RPM now. I can't do any smaller than two inch with this one now. So I got this one on eBay also. It's a manual and it's got a quick release, a quick release jaw here. This is nice for some things, but these things invariably are gonna hang up on your TIG torch. Problem with this is I whacked one with a hammer to get it loose and now I, I broke a shear pin in here. This is not supposed to freewheel like this. I've still got to fix that. Okay, here's the one I'll be welding with today. This is the Cadillac. MK Products Cobra Turn T260 Super Smooth with a digital readout, which is a big deal for a turntable. This one goes all the way down to 0.1 RPM, all the way to 6 RPM. So you got to do higher RPMs for really small diameter stuff, low RPMs for larger diameter. Figuring out the travel speed, I used to do this. I used to take a piece of tape with some increments on there and just kind of eyeball it. And that got me in the ballpark, but wasn't very repeatable. One of the coolest features is if you know if you duff your electrode or something, you need to stop. You don't have to wait for the part to come all the way back around to where you where you restart. It's got this neutral clutch here. So all I gotta do is kick it out of gear, and then I can spin this around to exactly where I want it without undoing the chuck. And then I'll put it back in gear, and then I'm ready to go again. It's a big, big time saver for positioning it, getting it right where you want it, without having to take the part off or just wait for a revolution. Another another option is I, I if I hold this button in, it'll fast it'll fast uh, jog the part, so it goes to max six. So if I want to just do that without kicking it into neutral, get it around to a favorable position again, I do that. And when I bump it, that's when it kicks it on. Or even while it's running, I can hold it in and do a fast jog. So, pretty awesome, I gotta say. I got the part all chucked up here. I got it locked in place. Now I need a place to prop. Doesn't do me any good to have a turntable positioner thing here if I don't have if I can't be steady here. Sometimes you can look outside of your industry and find something that works for what you're doing. And this particular prop that I'm going to use is for photography. Let me show you. It's a Manfrotto, uh, like an articulating arm, along with a, a clamp for the bench. I'm just going to clamp it right next to the positioner. Clamp that on there nice and tight. Now, I'm just going to figure out how I want to hold the torch, but I can just loosen up this, this one knob here. A little swivel head here, made for a camera. And then this arm swings this way, and then the bottom one swings, so I can just figure out how this thing is going to work for me. 
in the most comfortable area. Okay, that seems pretty good. And I can just lock it into place with the twist of one big knob. Let's weld. 210 amps, two pulses a second, 60% peak time, 60% background. I'm using a clear Jazzy 10 cup, mainly just so we can all see everything a whole lot better. I don't use clear cups for everything, but when I'm filming, it really helps you see the puddle, me see the puddle. It lights things up like crazy. All right, the rest of this thing looks pretty much the same. I just decided to use those same pulse settings because they work so well in that previous video on a similar job where everything was the same diameter, same thickness and everything. If I want a wire brush or something like that, I can go max by joggling by hitting that. One of the coolest things is this clutch, like I said before. Kick it out, it, kick it into neutral and, and spin it around. Big time saver. The whole reason you're getting a turntable is to save time, increase productivity. So having the clutch is huge. I can also weld at pretty much any angle. So I, I pop the spring-loaded pin in here and I can go in, in increments, 15 degree increments, all the way horizontal like this. If that's more comfortable for me, Got an argon port right here that argon comes up through the chuck through a little diffuser screen. We'll get into that a little bit later on some stainless. All right, let's do a little technique called walk in the cup. You don't need a prop for this, and I've done some parts like this before where I didn't prop. I just walked the cup using a turntable like this. It worked out pretty well. If you don't have a prop and you, you're pretty good at walking the cup, it's a, it's a pretty good option. Now for this, I think I'm using a number seven cup. And that really does matter a lot because you need a, the right cup size. If you use too big a cup, you can't wiggle it very well. If you use too small a cup, that's a problem too. But a seven cup, just whatever size cup will let you get the right electrode angle and let, let that cup wiggle along nice and easily like this. Now the size of the weld or the number of passes is going to be re, uh, determined by drawing or code requirement or customer requirement. I'm going to put multiple passes on this today for the sake of this video. Hey, real quick, before we finish up this weld, I want to let you know I got this Ultimate Pro Kit with the cups used in this video, as well as the most popular Furic cups, all kitted up to fit your torch. Weldmonger.com. Let's get back to the weld. This next pass, I'm just going to try to line up the edge of that weld with that first straight line on the socket weld fitting to give me a guide. And I'm just going to try to wash that in, that, that very edge, to try to keep that bead straight. If you've got your own welding business or a side hustle or whatever, this is the kind of work that you'd really love to get. It's just gravy. It's great practice. It's, it's actually very enjoyable. So we'll let that one cool off for a little bit, wire brush it off, and put a second pass on there. You got to find something to line up with on each pass. So you kind of either the edge of the weld or the, the toe of the weld or the edge of the fitting or something like that. That's, that's going to be true and no matter what kind of welding you're going to be doing so that you can kind of stay uniform and straight. That one looked like it could have used at least five or ten more amps. So I'll jack it up a little bit here for the last pass, the third pass. Don't want to go too high. Don't want to leave undercut. Don't want to overheat the thing. I let it cool a little bit between each pass too, by the way. Going back-to-back -back passes on this thing would just plain get it too hot. So I think I'm about 170 amps here for this last pass. And as you can see, I swapped over to a white ceramic Jazzy 10 cup just because it takes me several of these things to shoot a video. Are you wondering if this Jazzy 10 clear cup will fit your torch? How do you know what style TIG torch you have? How do you know if this cup, this kit will fit your torch? This quick video should help clear things up. Let's do it. If you're looking to upgrade from the standard torch hardware that comes with most TIG torches, you want to be sure that it's going to fit your torch. So how do you know? There are so many different brands, so many different numbers, it can get confusing. These are all 17, 18, 26 style torch. It doesn't matter what number, it doesn't matter what brand, if your hardware looks like this you have a 17, 18, 26 style torch. This Furic adapter kit for 17, 18, 26 style torches will make the Furic cups work with your torch, if that's what you have. 
That's another picture of it there. It's got two black insulators that come with it. Slightly different. One of them will fit. Now, there's nothing really wrong with the standard hardware that comes with them. It's a bit long. The, the long tail is a bit long for real work. It's good for practice. Even when you shorten it up with a little button on the end, it's, it's, you can only shorten it up so much. But to get better gas shielding, as well as just shorten up the overall length of the torch, this adapter kit will do it. You just swap out the white insulator with this different one here. Install the collet and collet body gas lens with the O-ring, moisten the O-ring, and slip on a clear cup like this Jazzy 10, which is great for stainless steel, nickel alloys, titanium, chromoly, and also it just shortens up the overall length of the torch and gives you really good gas coverage and lets you use a really long stick out when you need to. 9 and 20 style torches are a little bit smaller. They use a smaller collet body, not even an inch long. So if your hardware looks like this, you've got a 9 or a 20 style TIG torch. Could be air cooled, could be water cooled. They both use the same hardware. So in order to use a clear cup, we just replace the standard collet body with the gas lens collet body and put an O-ring on it that's included. That's a part number 45V. 44 for the 332nd gas lens collet body. 332nd are the most popular. It's the most universal size because you can weld anything from razor blades up to really thick stuff at 200 amps or more with a 332nd electrode. Just simplifies things. As you can see, I slipped the O ring down on the base of the gas lens, moisten it. Now I'm ready to slip on a Jazzy 10 cup or other clear cup. This is a really good example of the large area of gas shielding you get with a Jazzy 10. Also, it just kind of lights things up because it is really like a light bulb. There's a tungsten lit up up inside a glass cup that really kind of lights the way for you. And for convenience, we put together a couple of combo kits, one for each torch type that has a ceramic cup as well as a clear Jazzy 10 cup. Sometimes the job calls for one or the other and it's really easy to swap back and forth. You slip the clear cup over with the O-ring, and to swap over to the ceramic cup, just remove it, pop off the O-ring, and then the white ceramic cup threads on just like any other ceramic cup. Once you have the adapter kit or the 45V44 gas lens, it opens up a lot of other options to you for other Furic cups. This is an 8 Pro cup, and you can really see here how it's lighting everything up, and you can see every detail around you, where you're going, where you've been, things that might be in your way. And once again, in order to make the ceramic cups work, all you need to do is remove the O-ring, and all of the Furic ceramic cups will just thread right on. It gives you lots of options. You're going to see better gas coverage. You're going to be able to use a longer stick out, less discoloration on stainless steel. So once again, if, you're, if your hardware looks like this, you have a 17, 18, 26 style, and you need a Furic adapter kit to make the Furic cups work. If your hardware looks like this, you have a 920 style, and all you need is the 45V44 to make it work. Or maybe the more convenient way is to just get a combo kit that's got everything you need. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support.